Welcome into the Original Gangsters podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. We're going to break down a Philadelphia mob power ranking right now for the fall of 2024. We saw that the uh, the Sit Down uh, True Crime podcast put out a, um, a top 15 ranking for New York mobsters, and that inspired us to uh, roll out our own top 20, uh, including bosses, but not including uh, guys that are in prison for New York City. And now we're doing a Philadelphia top 10 fall 2024 mafia power rankings for the Bruno Scarfo crime family. We'll start at 10. I got two guys tied, Damian Canalicchio and Joe Grandy. They're both acting couples right now. Allegedly, uh, Damian speaks for uh, Stevie Mazzone, underboss in prison, and Joe Grandy speaks for a uh, capo, uh, his, uh, his nephew, Dominic, baby Dom Grande, also in prison. Um, number nine, Johnny Chang. I mean, I'm almost embarrassed putting him at number nine because this guy is such a, he's a true OG, man, uh, as, de- as evidenced by what happened uh, this summer. Um, the guy might be, uh, you know, 70 years old or pushing 70, uh, dealing with some health issues. But he's tough as nails and, uh, you know, as a guy that without question, I think in a different uh, different life could have been a boss. You know, comes from a top of the line pedigree, uh, former underboss himself, former capo. He's kind of semi-retired right now. I got him at number nine. Number eight, uh, the head of the New Jersey wing of the Bruno Scarfo clan, uh, clan Joe Scoops Licata, another guy that, uh, you know, they broke the mold when uh, when when they made Joe Scoops a uh, guy that uh, everybody loves is uh, you know a politician a guy that uh, you know get got his nickname because he always has the latest gossip for everybody he, he's got his ear to the street um, both in New Jersey Philadelphia New York uh, he's very connected guy goes way back um, so uh, number seven you know we, we've been talking about here at the OG the last year what. What's uh, what's old is new. What's new is old. Uh, Mousy Massimino, uh, we're carrying him as the underboss right now. Uh, former underboss back in the 2000s, came out of prison a couple of years ago and kind of represents that, uh, that Legambi era um, and uh, is just, uh, as Jerry Capace says, a dyed-in-wool uh, mafia figure, a guy that you know lives for this life. I think he's got four or five dozen... Uh, collars on his criminal record. Uh, go to number six, a little bit controversial, Phil Narducci. I just want to state that uh, Phil himself is adamant that uh, he has nothing to do with the Cosa Nostra anymore. So we always want to you know, respect uh, uh, respect that and, and make people know that. I don't think he has anything to do with kind of the Merlino crew orbit, if you will. Uh, kind of doing his own thing. I refer to him as a faction boss. We know, uh, up, you know, up until let's say five years ago, he was he was still uh, active in the sense he had to go do a little time for a loan sharking pinch. He did thirty years or twenty eight years uh, on a RICO and a murder that he got tossed. You know, this guy has just has universal respect uh, coast to coast. I haven't heard any guy. I haven't heard anyone uh, say a negative word about Phil Narducci from any family. Um, and is a guy that, uh, really kind of, can kind of write his own ticket. So I'm going to put him at number six, I'm not sure where he plays, uh, as we move forward, you know, into the second half of the 2020s. Um, but you know, he's, he's 62, uh, and very wealthy legitimately, uh, you know, has stakes in, in, um, fighters and MMA guys and has a, uh, I know he's. He's in real estate, uh, owns a, uh, operates a you know, Chicks, uh, which is a named after his dad, gastro pub in South Philly, and um, I got him at number six. So let's start uh, break it down. The top five at number five, I got Skinny Joey Merlino. I know the the word on the street right now is that he's no longer boss, but boss or no boss, Skinny Joey walks into a room. He commands that room. Um, you know. 
again, boss or no boss, this guy got this guy has juice wherever he goes. So I'm going to keep him at number five. Number four, Anthony Stano, alleged to be the um, acting consigliere or consigliere uh, in training for Legambi, was off the radar, did some prison time, came out of prison, slowly transitioned back. I'm told we're, we're a lot of his responsibilities um, have been upped in the last year. He's uh, one of the guys that goes back and forth for New, uh, to New York for them. Uh, number three, Mikey Lance, street boss. Uh, Capace was uh, carrying him as boss. Um, for me, he's always been the street boss. I know we can get into some of the semantics with the titles, but uh, either way, Mikey Lance at number three has held a major position for the last 10 years running the street for um, Legambi and Merlino. Number two, Uncle Joe Legambi. I mean, I, I think it's it goes unsaid, and, and I don't think it can really be debated that Uncle Joe Legambi is the most underrated, undervalued superpower uh, in terms of ability, in terms of what he did in the last 25 years, um, just so underrated as a godfather and as a Don um, coming in and, and stabilizing the Philly group, bringing respect back to that group. And, and Uncle Joe is, you know, is a guy that started off as a expert handicapper back in the day. I think a lot of people quietly saw him as future boss potential, even though he wasn't somebody that was really heralded as such. Um, kind of stumbled into the position after his uh, release from prison when he got his murder case caused. And a lot of the younger guys went went away. And he, he again, he met the moment. Um, and he's continued to meet the moment. And if we're kind of looking back at the Joe Legambi era, I mean, he checks every box. You know, this guy um, just really impressive um, resume for a guy that I don't know if a lot of people predicted that level of success at that level of power. But he's definitely a, a Hall of Famer when you're talking about the second half of the um, – when, when you're talking about the first uh, – part of the new millennium and uh, just as a tribute to uh, what kind of person Joe is and, and what kind of, um, you know, wise guy he is because, you know, you look up stand up guy in the, uh, in the dictionary, you're, you're going to see a picture of Joe Legambi. And then we'll finish off with Georgie Borghese. Uh, he's number one, most powerful guy in South Philly right now. Uh, he's running the Bruno Scarfo crime family. I think it's a job he's wanted for a long time. Officially, he got the job this year. Um, I've been carrying him as acting boss for five years. Uh, my sources say that he took over the day-to-day -day operations from Uncle Joe when Uncle Joe retired or tried to retire on his 80th birthday in, in the summer of 2019. Uh, some people say it, it was Lance. I, I, you know, my sources still say that that uh, Georgie. Um, still kind of outranked Lance. I I look at what Jerry Capace is reporting. It looks like he was saying that Lance outranked Georgie until this year. You know, we can agree to disagree on that, but either way, Georgie Borghese, uh, as we wind down 2024, he's the Don. He's a guy that, you know, we know here at OG pod is a, you know, a mob historian, someone who really likes to study um, the history of this thing. Somebody that uh, is, you know, a strategist, a guy that is always thinking two or three steps ahead. So uh, this this seems like the natural order of things and the natural fit. And uh, he seems to be able to thread a needle here between staying loyal to Joey as his friend, but keeping the organization moving in the direct, uh, right direction and preventing any further alienation from the guys in New York, uh, New York because of the podcast issue. So that's our uh, power rankings for Philly right now, fall of 2024. Georgie Borghese at the number one spot, but didn't forget about Skinny Joe. We still got him at number five. So please like, subscribe, and share the OG pod. Check out the Patreon. We got, you know, kind of more analytical 
uh, less newsy stuff on there. You, you're going to get the, uh, you know, early access to all the interviews, uh, more, uh, you know, you get the director's cut of the interviews. If the interview is, you know, if the YouTube audience is getting, a, is getting an hour, you're getting an hour and a half or hour and 45 minutes on the Patreon. Keep on spreading the word. We'll keep on uh, uncovering the underworld 24 hours at a time. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod, we're out.